Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On, and I'm here after a lot of you have been asking where he is with Craig Vi for another Youth Watch. We haven't done a Youth Watch for a while for that. I apologize, but it will be coming back more regularly because I just can't get enough of Craig Vi. How are you, Craig? I'm, I'm well, mate, yeah, thank you. Not, not had much sleep. Had a baby. Had a baby. Not myself, of course, my wife, but you know. Married, sorry. Yeah. Sorry for you. Uh, 1% demographic who are women, uh, <laughs> I'm afraid, Craig, currently unavailable. But, you know, who knows about the future? Oh, <laughs> let's hope, uh, that, one, doesn't let's hope that 1% doesn't doesn't include Craig's wife. Yep. Uh, anyway, most importantly, we've got to talk about Tottenham, their unbelievable academy, uh, and how things are going. So let's get this started off with a little menu. I'll tell you exactly what we're going to talk about over the course of the next 10 minutes or so. Or so. We're going to start with uh, the Spurs players that are currently in the uh, youth international squads. We're going to talk about Marcus Edwards. Uh, we're going to talk about the under-18s, a little bit of mixed form, but they're just on the back of a, a good result. We're going to talk about the under-21s, whose form hasn't been quite so good. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, European tournaments that our youth teams are playing in coming up. And we're going to talk about how the future looks bright for our unders teams at the moment. So let's get this started. Um, you want to talk a little bit about the academy players in the international squads at the yeah, moment? Yeah, I just want to focus really on the players who are in the England squads, the youth set up there, because it, there's loads of them, basically. And um, it's just a credit to the great work that, that we're doing in the academy. Do you think, do you think um, the fact that the training ground was built, uh, you know, it's probably in, we're in our third or fourth season mm. there now, uh, and that is really leading to an improvement of those players and that's getting them into those international I think, I squads. I think it can only help, can't it? I mean, you know, the, everyone that comes, any players that come from, from anywhere around Europe, they say it is basically the best facility, mm. certainly in Europe, possibly in the world. And um, it, can only, it can only help, can't yeah. it, in the long run? I yeah. think, you know, it, it's the type of place that, as a young player, you're bound to be inspired, you know. They, they must feel so lucky going yeah. there every day to Got, train. And, and also, do you remember Spurs Lodge? The, the <laughs> training ground we had before was just a shocker. It was. It was, Pretty yeah. Horrible. So Went there it, once. Yeah, well, it, it, it's, it's got to help at the end of the day. I think it's, it's probably a big reason. And like you said, I think it's it's well bedded in there now. Right. And um, there's a reason why some of these players are in the England squads. Yeah, well, look, I mean, you know, they're, they're, we've got some quality players. So I'll just list some of them for you very quickly. So in the under 17s, you've got Jaffet Tanganga, Jaden Brown, and Samuel Sashowa. Uh, in the under 18s, you've got Alfie Whiteman and Marcus Edwards, who we're going to speak about shortly. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the under 19s, you've got Kyle Walker Peters and Josh Onoma. Yeah. And to be honest with you, that seems like a small handful when you consider that there are quite a few players that have missed out as well, that have been in and around the squads before, um, even at younger ages as well. Oliver Skip, who I think is an under 15, you've got Nia Kirby, Rio Griffiths. Uh, Tash and Oakley Booth. I mean, it, it's looking really good. You know, we've got some really good young talent there, yeah. and it's really pleasing to see them mixing it at the top level for yeah. youth football. Let, let's talk about a few of them. Firstly, um, who's that? Uh, Jaffet Tanganga. Yeah, Jaffet Tanganga. He sounds um, like a Bond villain. He does a bit sound like a, a Bond villain. Yeah. Um, I can't confess to knowing too much about Jaffet Tanganga, but um, I, I do know that he plays uh, as a defender. Yeah. Um, uh, or defensive midfield sometimes operates in that position, uh, as far as I'm aware, and um, he looks like a solid prospect. Yeah. Um, again, I, you know, throughout all the age groups, we've got players who were very versatile. Um, we again, we I've talked about it before. We've got a, a, a real uh, loads of players from the sort of in the midfield yeah. who um, can play as either attackers. T talking about Tash and Oakley Booth, actually, I'll pick up on him because he's a player that not a few people might have heard of, but um, he's. Again, a very versatile midfield player. Often plays in, as the kind of deep-lying midfielder. Sure. Would be playing again in the under-17 category. Role. Yeah, in the kind of dire role, but he does get forwards as well. And um, in the, we played a match that we're going to talk about shortly as well against Wolves recently. He was the, the outstanding player on the pitch, okay. uh, according to me uh, and a few others. And um, he is his close ball control. Yeah. Absolutely incredible that, that you, it, it's like it's on a piece of string by his foot. He's amazing. Is, um, do you think, because uh, I remember I, I worked on a TV show years ago where um, we were, had to go to the Chelsea training ground every day because we were involved with the youth team there. And that was when Mourinho was first there. And uh, they explained how every single youth uh, team, you know, from under 10s upwards all the way to the first team, had to play the same formation. Mm -hmm. They had to have a Makaleli role and someone playing just like Makaleli. Is that something that Pochettino is, is trying to instill across the academy, do you think? I, th I think so. It seems that way. Yeah, um, it makes sense. Yeah, and it does make sense because it means that players and, and academies are always in a kind of state of flux anyway with the yeah. players that are there. And what I mean by that is that players will play above their age group 
players will play down from their age group as well, depending on the requirements of certain games or certain tournaments. And you can see that throughout all of the different age groups that we've got, all of the different squads that we've got, that these players are able to slot in very, very easily. We've got a lot of players who seem similar to one another, and I guess, again, that that only sort of proves the point, really, right. that um, you know we do like to play in a certain way. All of the teams are excellent with the ball at the feet. Pass and move, um, yeah. and and you know trying to play that pressing full game backs as well. pushing on, full backs pushing on. Yeah, yeah. I mean Kyle Walker Peters, yeah. um, who of course is in the under 19 squad uh, with Josh uh, Onama. He is, I mean, you know he's got he's the, the same name. He's the as great Kyle hope, Walker. isn't he? A lot he of people is, talk yeah. about him as being the next one. I know he got in the Premier League squad uh, right. for the Bournemouth game, didn't yeah. he, for the first time? Yeah, he did. Yeah, which was lovely to see. And um, like I mentioned to you, I, I was hoping that he might get some minutes. I don't think, uh, like we had the discussion, I'm not so sure that that's what Posh's philosophy is about, just giving players minutes for the sake of it. Yeah. Um, I think he, he wants to put them in if he feels like they can do a job. I, I, I would like to see him come on, I really would. Um, he's a right back, isn't he? He is, is he, oh, yeah. Uh, did he play left back in the pre-season tournament? I, I remember seeing well, he's, again, in Australia. He's, again, yeah, he's versatile, right. so he can he can play on either side. Right back is his preferred pos position, he yeah. definitely plays better there. Yeah. But again, he's, he's one of these uh, full backs that likes to bomb on. Um, he has great interplay, it's normally um, uh, Emmanuel Sanupe who he plays with on the right. Um, and they have a really good understanding between okay. each other. Uh, he gets past Sanupe a lot, and Sanupe tracks back as well, so that seems good to work really well. Good crosser of the ball. Carl yeah. Walker's crossing has improved in the last month, I think, but uh, not always the best crosser, yeah. but Carl Walker-Peters uh, good Yeah, he is, he is. Yeah, I think he's got a good delivery on him. Again, though, even in the youth team levels, it, it's, it's rare to see us just cross the ball, you know? that. It, it, we, it, talking about you know us all playing the same way, I yeah. think that that's evident in the fact that despite them them bombing on, the, it, it's not sort of big lofted balls into the yeah. box all the time. Although at one age group we do have a player called Ryan Loft that we've spoken about before who is lofty and you can loft balls into Ryan Loft. But other than other than when Ryan Loft is playing, okay. it, it, it's, it tends to be a lot of interplay on the ground and, sure. and balls whipped in across. Well, one more thing about Kyle Walker-Peters is I have uh, had him on Champo, Football Manager, uh, handheld and uh, I started as Spurs and he actually went off to Everton on loan in the second season and played so well at Everton that he got in the international squad so I brought him back stuck him in my team and Kyle Walker got annoyed and sodded off to QPR <laughs> so uh, We've maybe, got another who one. knows We've got two Kyle who knows what may happen Kyle Walker may, uh, Walker Peters may break in uh, okay so let's talk again uh, let's talk now about uh, a man who I would describe as possibly the most talked about player in the academy at the mm -hmm. moment Marcus Edwards lots of yeah. talk about him potentially uh, being interesting other clubs, but he's been in fantastic form, hasn't he? He has, yeah, since the turn of the year. Um, I think he scored six goals and, and made three assists or something like that. And we were wow. just talking about the fact that um, he's just scored two for the England uh, under 18s, 18s, under 18s yeah, against Austria, Austria. In, a, in a 3 2 victory, I think. That's right, yeah. So th th he is a kid that everyone's talking about. He's the jewel in the crown of the academy at the moment. Mm. Um, and is he going to let that go to his head, though? Because I, I remember from years back, mm -hmm. lots of people talking about the one who's going to make it, the, the next one, and then you kind of never hear them again because maybe they, they get it into their yeah. heads. Well, it's, you the, know. it's the Bostock yes. syndrome, right. I suppose you could say, isn't it? And It's a bit different because we did buy him. But yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, it, it's that whole kind of thing with the mentality, isn't it? Bostock was, was yeah. you know, he was the golden boy. Um, and expected to kick on and, and didn't. And we've had players like that, you know. Who the one I really gone. remember was, do you remember, Phil, is it Phil Eiffel? Phil Eiffel, him? The yeah. right back. Yeah. He got a couple of games, but I remember people mm. talking in, about him being, he was going to be, you know, an England right back. And amazing. Had a couple of games and then kind of disappeared. Yeah, I know. yeah, I know. It and happens, I suppose. I Look, you know. I mean, everyone, as a perfect example, everyone thought Harry Kane was never going to make it. And then suddenly, that's it. you know, he kept working, kept working, yeah. kept working, became the best striker in the country. Well, it's, it's all about players develop at different rates, don't yeah. they? And um, it's all about having the trust in those players. Um, and the, the club used the loan system very, very well. Yeah. Um, and certainly have over the last couple of years, you've got players like Grant Ward out on loan doing very well. Yeah. Uh, Dominic Ball starting to get some game time at yeah. Rangers. Gr um, uh, Connor um, Ogilvy, 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 Ogilvy yeah. um, playing at Stevenage, although he's come back to the club now. Um, Did he get an injury? In, yeah, yeah, injury. But he's been playing really well there, and it's been a bit of a, he's, he has been hampered by injury a bit. But you know, we, we're very good at doing that, of kicking players on. Yeah. Back, bringing it back to Marcus Edwards. Sure, sorry. Yeah. Um, I, I can't see that happening with Marcus. Okay. I mean, he's got. You know, you, you, I can feel myself saying it already, and people said this about Bostock. He's got too much talent. Mm -hmm. He is too. I mean, people like Barca, Real Madrid have been nosing around, and there was a bit of speculation at yeah. the start of the year as to whether 
Marcus Ed was going was to sign for us, whether he was going to move on. And I'm not really sure that he's 100% settled, which is a slight worry. Yeah. Um, and he, he, is, he is in really good form as well. The, the good news we, is... we lost Ishmael Azoui, didn't we? We did, um, yeah. I don't want Edwards to go the same way. No, as that, exactly. Really. And, and, and Velkovic, although he's a different player as well, of course, losing him to a permanent contract to Werder Bremen. Yep. Um, he's, I think he's made three appearances so far and started... The other day, they did lose 5-0 against Bayern when he right. started. Well, and Bayern are really get a touch, quite a good team. They are. They're all right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, You think Marcus will keep it on the straight now and, and he wants to be at the club? I, 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 I think in the short term, he definitely does. I think, uh, look. If I were a young player right now, I couldn't think of a be better expert. place to be. Yeah. You know, they get blooded, they get time on the pitch. That's it. You know, he could go to a Barca or a Real or a Man United or whatever and never be seen again. No, that's right. And, and the good news is, I, I'm so, so I hear... He has signed a two-year contract. It's not a pro contract. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a youth contract, um, a scholarship contract. But he has signed for two years. So that gives us a little bit of security, yep. we hope. And um, fingers crossed we'll get to see more of Marcus Edwards in the future. Yeah. OK, so now let's move on to the under-18s. Uh, they've had mm -hmm. some mixed form, but a good result recently. Yeah, a great result. Actually, um, at both age groups, at under-18s and under-21s, we've spanked Wolves. OK. Um, and uh, it, it was no different in this match. We actually beat Wolves 7-3 with the under-18s. That, like that is like a result from the 1940s. Yes, a school used to, result. Heard, used to hear those results back in the day all yeah. the time. Oh, 10-3. <laughs> That's it, yeah. 7-3. And uh, it. it was a really good, really good performance. Very, very promising. Um, lovely interplay again, lovely quick passing, quick football. There was some pressing going on. Uh, again, I, I spoke about him briefly. Tashan Oakley Booth was the star in this match. Yeah. Uh, a real standout. He's um, uh, amazing on the ball. He, uh, I think he, he made two assists and actually scored himself um, and uh, looked a real prospect in that match. Um, it, we have had indifferent form. That it, at that age level, that you know they're still learning and I think what Spurs are really concentrating on is getting the passing game right, getting the yeah. pass and move, getting the technical aspects of the game right, because it, it always tends to be the defensive side of things where we struggle. Right. And that was evident again in this match. Um, Wolves actually scored their three goals, all came from set pieces. Right. Well, that sounds familiar. Yeah, it does sound familiar. Although I it? say that, I mean, we, I remember especially after the Leicester result this year, everyone's like, we can't con defend corners. But actually, I think if you look at the stats, we've got, I think we've. The first team. I, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. the first team. I think we've conceded. The least goals from set pieces. Well, actually. I mean, we've got the the best defence in the Premier League this season, haven't we? So, yeah. uh, the, you know, there is a there is a distinction between the first team and the youth teams at the yeah. moment, uh, and I think it's mainly because the, other than players like Carter Vickers, who are just immense, yeah. they're, they're really concentrating on playing it out from the back, right. the high press, you know, making sure that all of the teams are trying to play in the same way. Yeah. And I think it means that we do get caught out, particularly from set pieces. I think it was a corner. Um, it was a short corner that was taken for their first goal. I think it was, a, again, either a free kick or something like that for the second goal. Mm. Um, and a penalty. So you can see yeah. where we have problems. Yeah. But in terms of our attacking play and yeah. our forward intent, it was it was great. It was really nice well, to If see. I was a centre-back in the academy, I would just be basically watching and staring at Toby Alderweireld all day, <laughs> yeah. every day, yeah. and just being like, just that, copying is, what yeah, he does. that is how to play. What an yeah. unbelievable player. Okay, so from the under-18s, let's go on to the under-21s. Mm. They've been in poor form, they, but they just won their first match in nine. They have. Hallelujah, yeah. And that's um, Ugo Ehiog's team, isn't that's it? That's right, yeah. And Ugo uh, obviously was very, very happy. Um, and I don't know whether this is a good omen or not, really, but uh, it was against Leicester. We beat Leicester 3-0. So, you know, big, hopefully... Big club Leicester. Yeah. Mm. Hopefully that will rub off and that little bit of good luck that yeah. we got on good fortune against them may rub off in the title mm. chase. Yeah. yeah. What annoys me a bit thinking about it is that actually, you know, we've lost five points to Leicester this season, haven't mm. we? And we are five points behind Leicester. I so know. That game where, yeah. um, just breaking into the first team again, but that game where they equalised straight after we scored mm. with five minutes to go. That could have uh, could have changed everything. Yeah. Um, but Ugo, so Ugo, back in my day as a kid, Ugo Ehiog was one of the best centre backs around. So he, presumably he won't be delighted that uh, you know some of the academy teams are conceding a lot of goals. No, no, I don't. And I, you know, he clearly as a defender, that is something that he concentrates on. The the, the beauty for him with the under twenty ones, particularly, is that he's had CCV, yeah. um, he's had uh, uh, Magoma playing in there from time to time. Um, and he's also had uh, Velkovic, who's been able yeah. to drop into centre back as well. And you know, you're talking about three players, particularly CCV and Velkovic, who were absolutely solid. Yeah. Um, the, the difference well, Cam is Cameron Carter Vickers is now in the out. squad all the time now that Fazio has gone. He's injured, yeah, obviously, he's injured, but yeah. he's out for the season with a back injury. Back I injury, think. yeah. But before that injury, and once Fazio had gone on loan, he was getting into the first team squad. So yeah, again, well, Posh, just Posh shows named him, didn't he? Yeah. Said, look, you know, he, he was going to have CCV in his uh, squads yeah. rather than having Fazio in there. So. That, that, there is a lot of talk about CCV being mm. the new Ledley King, and it's you know 
you have to be careful when you're you're putting labels. Well, he on is injured, like that. so <laughs> yeah, true. He is yeah. injured, so you yeah. know, very similar in a lot Luckily, of ways. It's not his knees. Um, so, but they got that win they did. against first, Leicester. Yeah. yeah, and it was the first win in nine. Um, yeah, they've been a on a really, and they haven't they, they haven't lost eight, but they had lost quite a few matches. And um, it, I don't know. It's it's a it's a strange one to try and put your finger on the reasons yeah. why. Um, again, you know, it might be down to the kind of whole playing style. Actually, well, they you know, lost their captain, so Valkovic did play a exactly. lot, and then uh, they lost him. So that's right. And and um, Eki, one of the things he did say after after the win was that what he was most pleased to see was the forward intent. Right. Actually, and said that that had been missing. Okay. The attacking side of our game had been missing, and the competitiveness in the in midfield. Okay. Um, and I have to kind of agree with him a bit, really, which seems strange considering that we've been losing and, and drawing quite a few games. You would think that he would focus on the defence and being more happy about the clean sheet. But it was the, the forward intent that most pleased him. And okay. my personal opinion as to why we've had this bad run of form, I, I, again, I spoke earlier on about the, 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 the fact that academies tend to be in a full state of flux. So you, you never have a fully settled team at any age. Sure, sure. You have players who are coming in and out all of the time, players who are going away on loan. But you do tend to have a nucleus of a team mm. that, that you can see stay around for many years. You had the Mason and, and um, Bentaleb yep. uh, team uh, who played in the development squad for, for quite a few years together. That seems to have been missing. Well, th those kind of key players mm. have either gone out on loan. Right. Uh, you know, your Grant Wards. Um, Dominic Ball. Dominic Ball. Um, of course, you've had um, Adowa, 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 Adowa going Adowa, to yeah. Rangers. Velkovic now being sold off. Shaquille Coulthurst. Yep. Um, being um, sold as well um, to Peterborough, so you know we, we we've we've missed some key players. We've missed other players through injury, and you know, dare I say it, I, I think we've been trying to find the the right balance in the team and the right, right. T squad of players to to take us forwards. I think we're starting to get that now, um, and hopefully we'll kick on after this win. Good, confident. That's good that we're getting a win. Ugo, who I like, I think he's got steel. Top yeah, defender he, he was. Um, Euro tournaments coming up, a couple of uh, tournaments in uh, Europe for the younger age groups. We yeah. usually tend to do well at these, don't we? We the, do, the, we do. The next gen yeah, tournaments. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, and uh, touching on Shaquille Cortez, of course, it was the next gen tournament that really sort of brought him and his name to prominence because he scored a hat trick against Barcelona. Right. Um, and the next gen tournament has kind of gone off the radar for the last couple of years. It's a revamped next gen tournament, which is coming on the agenda again. I think they're playing it in uh, May. In Amsterdam, you've got teams like Ajax, Barca, yeah. PSV, and Galatasaray. So yeah. um, it's going to be a real Ajax test. Ajax's academy, just down the years, has always been known as the best. Well, the best as well as Barca's, obviously. That's right. where they all yeah. live there and stuff, don't they? Yeah, in Barca. Yeah, exactly. Crazy. Um, and and you know, it'll be a real it will be a real eye opener to see just how well our yeah. younger players stand up against players from those academies. And that's the one of them's the under 19s Champions the Trophy one, in yeah. Dusseldorf. That's right. Again, these tournaments. It, they te they're invitationals, basically. Yeah. Um, so it, it, you know, they do call it the Champions Trophy. Um, we've got you've got PSV and, and Munchen Gladbach uh, in one uh, group, and you've got uh, teams like Benfica and Bejiktas okay. uh, in the other group. So again, right. you know, some big European sides. It'll be really interesting to see how we fare. We do tend to do well in these tournaments, yeah. like you say. Um, let's, let's go there. Let's go there and lift a trophy. Yeah. Let's just do it. Um, okay. So kind of final thing now, just in general, uh, can talk, uh, you wanted to mention how next season. Uh, our under-18 squad will have basically as many youth internationals as it has. Just the future looking bright. It does. It does look really bright. Yeah, the, in particular the under-18 level. So the under-21s, you know, um, putting them aside for one minute, some of the players that we're going to have coming through into the under-18s, uh, it should be immense. There's a couple of other teams as well. Man City are, are in a very similar position. Mm. They've got a lot of young talent. And actually, Man City is one of the teams that really, I would say, we can kind of try to judge ourselves against. Yeah. You, you have teams like Sunderland Ugh. who always seem to do well in, in youth football at the moment because they tend to pack their teams out with these big, huge guys, guys who have been in and out of the first team squads uh, a lot. Okay. They're, they're Sam, older. Sam Allardyce players. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, those types of players. And they, they do tend to bully teams like us. Um, and and we, we, we're concentrating less on the kind of results side of things. But um, coming back to our under-18s for next season, I mean, it, it really does look good. You've got players like... Um, Naya Kirby, who I should mention because um, people might have seen recently on the official uh, Spurs Twitter feed, uh, he was training with the first team. Oh, okay. um, and this is something I'm, I'm led to believe happens uh, to kind of reward players who have been doing particularly well in training, looking good in the academy matches. Um, and it's Posh's way and the academy's way of saying, look, you're doing well, son. Yeah. Come up and see what it's like uh, yeah. in and amongst the first team. But um, we've got younger players, like Oliver Skip, uh, players like Rio Griffiths, Tashinoki Booth that I've mentioned, players like Keenan Bennett, of course, Marcus Edwards, uh, 
Jaden Brown, yeah. Jaffit Tanganga, uh, you've got TJ I Ioma, um, and I'm probably pronouncing these wrongs, uh, these names incorrectly, but Alfie Whiteman. Um, I just think you've got that one right. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah fingers crossed. So these um, guys, they're all going to be uh, youth interna the youth international. Yeah, so you think next season we'll have the strongest under-18 side we've ever it, had? Definitely the strongest under-18 side that we've ever had, certainly for, for a long, long time. Th I think the academy is probably at the best place it's ever been at. Yeah. So it, it's probably since fair Nick to Barnby say... Since Nick Barnby and Darren Caskey. Since those heighty days, yeah. um, this is probably going to be the best team of players that we've amassed at that age group. Uh, for a very long time, uh, right. if not ever. And so it's really exciting to see what they're going to be like playing together. What's not to love about being a Spurs fan at the moment? Mm. The first team, second in the league, five points behind Leicester with seven games to go. The youth team doing well. Youth teams, the, the academy being the best place in the world for young players yeah. to train at. And we get Craig Vi to come in and talk about it. Craig, brilliant. Thank you very much. No worries, mate. Uh, we'll have you on again very soon, Thanks, guys. guys. Let us know what you thought about Youth Watch in the comments section below. Uh, let us know what you thought about having Craig back. Let us know what you thought about his baby. Let us know <laughs> anything you want in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter, at Spurred on TV. And keep supporting the boys. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Hi, guys. Barnaby for Spurred on. Now, for those of you who've been watching from the beginning, we used to do quite a regular series called Arsenal Troll Comments because at the beginning, we were getting a lot of abuse from Arsenal fans. 